Well, it's simple, really. After Sunday's game, here's what I found out about our 2014 Philadelphia Eagles. They're a very good team, but they're not an elite team. The writing, it's been on the wall. But Sunday, that was the reality check. They may make it to the divisional round of the playoffs or even sneak into the NFC Championship game, but they won't be tasting the rainbow this season. There's been a lot of negative Nancys out there, a lot of Debbie Downers, a lot of angry Allisons, a lot of pissed off Pollies after this loss. I mean, those fingers, they were ablazing on Twitter. They were like, la, 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 like that. And you know what? I don't necessarily blame you guys. The reality, it was harsh. This was the test to find out if this team had a chance to win a Super Bowl this season. But the defending champion Seattle Seahawks, well, they came into Philadelphia and they fucking spanked us. They gave us a nice little spanking. Now, I'm going to get back to the game in a bit. But this is where I, I want to try and take just a little positive spin on things. I just want to remind you guys, this is a process. This is a transition from the Andy Reid era to the Chip Kelly reign. The Eagles, they were never going to win a Super Bowl this year. It just wasn't going to happen. Coaches don't just go hoisting the Lombardi Trophy during their second year at the helm. And look, I, I get it. Trying to preach patience in Philadelphia is like trying to tell Bob Marley that he shouldn't be smoking weed. It's hard to be patient when you've never won a Super Bowl. We just want to win one time. Just one fucking time. We just want to know how it feels. Sure, we had the Phillies win it all in 2008, but no party on Broad Street's going to be grander than the one when the Eagles finally win it all. Now, we got excited because this team was winning a bunch of games, and quite frankly, the NFC has been as wide open as I've seen it in a while. This is why I thought maybe, just maybe, we were allowed to dream. Because why not us? Why not the Eagles? Why couldn't this be the year? <sighs> well, let's get back to this second year thing. You know, coaches, they just don't win the whole thing in their second year. Yeah, of course, you have... Mike Tomlin and John Gruden while with the Buccaneers, and even Jim Caldwell, who guided the Colts to a Super Bowl appearance. But those guys inherited a lot of talent. It usually takes four years for a great coach to build a legit Super Bowl contender. And this is where people are going to say, well, yeah, you know, Bill Belichick won in the second year, and you know what? You're right. The Patriots, they went 5-11 and in 2000, and then won the whole damn thing in 2001. But remember how I was talking about how the NFC was wide open that, this season? That's how the AFC was in 2001. The old one, Pats, that team wasn't ready to win a Super Bowl, but they did. They went 11-5. and five. You know, they, they, they had the tuck rule game in the divisional playoffs, beat Pittsburgh in the AFC championship game, and then, you know, shocked the Rams in the Super Bowl. They went 9-7 and seven the year after, and, well, to me, they didn't really become a dominant squad until 2003 when they won the first of their back-to-back -back titles. Now, on to my four-year theory. And just to give you just, just two examples, I got two guys. Andy Reid, of course, and let's go with Pete Carroll because we played the Seahawks yesterday. Big Red, of course, became the Eagles' head man in 1999 and went 5-11 in his first season before guiding the Birds to an 11-5 mark in 2000 and a trip to the divisional round. That 2000 squad it had an elite defense, but offensively, you know, they just weren't going to cut it. It just wasn't good enough. Donovan McNabb was in his second year, and they just, they just weren't ready to take on the upper tier of the NFL. 2001, the Eagles took another leap forward and reached the NFC Championship game. They put up a great fight against the St. Louis Rams before ultimately being defeated. 2002. That was Andy's fourth year. And from 2002 to 2004, that was the three-year window for the Eagles to win a Super Bowl. Defense was elite. McNabb was in his prime. But obviously, Philly, it never won it all. And that's unfortunate. It really was. Because, you know, they, they had some teams that definitely could have won it all. It just never happened. Now, let's talk about Carroll. First two seasons. With Seattle, he goes 7-9 and nine each year. Third year, guides the Seahawks to an 11-5 record and a trip to the divisional round. Obviously, Seattle went 13-3 a year ago 
and went on to win the Super Bowl. So, let's compare records. First two seasons between Carol Reed and even Belichick. Carol goes 14 and 18. Reed and Belichick both were 16 and 16. Chip Kelly so far is 19 and 10. That's pretty good. It's really good. Considering he was a college guy with his gimmick offense coming into the NFL and everybody was doubting the guy. But he's 19 and 10. He's winning games. Now, I kind of already hate looking into next season, but in order for this team to be a legitimate Super Bowl contender, they've got a lot of holes to fill. First, Chip needs to find out who this franchise quarterback's going to be. Is it Nick Foles? Or is it someone else that's not on the roster? In terms of Foles, I'd like to see him play another year until I judge him. You know, and I'll, I know a lot of people have you know, already given up on the guy, but I'm not ready to go there and make that classification yet. Give him one more year. See what happens. Team also needs another wide receiver. I, you know, I, I know this is where people, well, they, they had the Sean Jackson and they cut him. I, I didn't, you know, with Jackson, I agreed with letting him go because his shenanigans were, were just too much for me. I, I'm not a big guy of the shenanigans. I, I don't like it, all right? Just get him off my team. But, you know, obviously, Riley Cooper, he's just simply not cutting it. They don't need a star or anything, but someone that's, that's at least serviceable. Cooper is just flat out garbage. The defense has really come along in Billy Davis's second year as defensive coordinator, especially the front seven. But this secondary is shit. It's complete shit. It stinks. It needs drastic changes. They need a shutdown corner and another safety. All right, let's finally talk about this game. And you know what? Quite frankly, it was over once McCoy put the ball on the ground to start the second half. You know, got all loosey-goosey with that shit and put it on the ground. You know, the Seahawks, they capitalized when Marshawn Lynch broke wide open down the left sideline for a 15-yard score. That makes it 17-7. And after this happened, you know, obviously I'm not going to give up in the game. I I'm never going to give up on the Eagles. But it felt like the game was over. It felt that way. Because from what I saw in the first half, I didn't have any faith in the offense. None. The Seahawks were straight up shutting us down. Philadelphia was outgained 242 to 67 in the first half. One of six on third down. Held the ball for only eight minutes. Now, to give the Birds credit, though, they, they responded beautifully after that Lynch score. Sanchez had just 32 yards passing prior to his 35 yard TD toss to Zach Ertz down the left sideline. And just like that, it was 17 to 14. But then the refs came into play. Now, I'm not a guy that you know, likes to play the blame the refs game here. But let's face it, these refs were garbage. Awful. You know, in fact, I got a stat for you. During Chip Kelly's tenure, the Eagles fell to 1-5 in five when Bill Vinovich's crew refs their games. Seattle, meanwhile, moved to 6-0. and oh. You know, that Pete Carroll man... He is such a freaking weasel. They get every call going their way, and he's still looking for more flags. God, what a freaking asshole. So, Bradley Fletcher gets called for a 44-yard pass interference penalty. Huge call in the game. Now, I didn't necessarily disagree with the call. But what I had a problem with, if you're going to call it on us, you better damn sure call it on them too. I mean, the Seahawks, they play a physical style in the secondary where they pretty much bait the official to throw a flag. It's why the NFL proceeded to further emphasize the illegal contact rule this season. There were plays where the Eagles were getting assaulted, you know, and the refs, they just stood there. They just stood there, kept, the, kept their hands in their pockets. Now, again, I don't want to play this blame game because... Eagles, quite frankly, they didn't deserve to win the game. They got shellacked. They got whopped. They got freaking annihilated. That 24-14 scoreline, clearly not indicative of how bad they were outplayed. But the refs, they were garbage. All right? They were garbage. <sighs> All right, so Fletcher gets called for the P.I. And then Doug Baldwin, you know, just burns Malcolm Jenkins pretty bad in that one-on-one coverage there. Scores a 23-yard touchdown. Makes it 24-14. to 
And to me, it was definitely over at this point. There were a couple more chances for the Birds to get back into the game. You know, they got a rare Barshad Lynch fumble. But then Sanchez throws a lollipop on the very next play, and the Seahawks regain possession. Jenkins also had an opportunity to haul in a pick six late in the fourth, but he wasn't able to secure the catch. But again, let's face it, Seattle took us to the woodshed. They outgained Philly 440 to 139 in total yards. Held the ball for 42 minutes. And a reason why they held on to the ball so long, the Eagles were just 2 of 11 on third down. Sure, Chip Kelly doesn't give a shit about time of possession. But the Seahawks ran 85 plays. The Birds ran just 45 of Philly's 13 possessions. The Eagles recorded four three and outs and eight non-scoring drives that went four plays or fewer. It's not going to get it done, guys. Mark Sanchez was 10 of 20 for just 96 yards, and Shady McCoy carried the ball 17 times for 50 yards, averaging just 2.9 yards per carry. Now, I know McCoy had a heavy heart you know, coming into the game. He lost his cousin in a car accident, but didn't have a good game. You know, Seattle did do something that was pretty smart. So yeah, the Seahawks are normally a team that you know doesn't really like tinkering with their corners. Uh, Richard Sherman strictly plays on the left side. Byron Maxwell normally on the right side. But Pete Carroll elected to put Maxwell in the slot on Jordan Matthews. You know, Brandon Browner was a very good corner for Seattle, teaming up with Sherman and, and make, making that duo very physical, very formidable. But one of the reasons why the Seahawks were able to let Browner walk this past offseason was the emergence of Maxwell a year ago. And he did a hell of a job on Matthews yesterday. I mean, normally I'm not a big fan of you know, moving outside corners into the slot because slot receivers are a lot smaller, a lot quicker. You know, it's different. It's a different thing. You know, DRC, it didn't work for him, did it? But Matthews, he's not your prototypical slot guy. You know, he's a lot bigger. And what can I say? Matthews got shut down. So clearly, the, the Seahawks, they weren't scared of Cooper on the outside. And why should they be? Why should they be? Philly ran a lot of crossing patterns yesterday. And they just... It's just simply not going to work on this defense. It's just not. Their tackling is just too good. The secondary is nicknamed the Legion of Boom for a reason. Um, this was a game where the Seahawks, they dared Sanchez to beat them. They stacked the box. They even had nine guys in there at some, some points in the game and matched up one-on-one -on -one against Philly's receivers. Um, but McCoy had nowhere to go. And Sanchez, he played like shit. He played like shit. It's that simple. There were even times where I saw guys break free and he just flat out missed them. Extremely inaccurate yesterday. And, you know, had a lot of balls get away from him. Here's another thing I wanted to bring up about Seattle's defense. It's starting 11 is very, very good. But in terms of depth, the Seahawks are not as deep as the defenses from last year or even two years ago. But when you hold the ball for only 18 minutes and run, and run just 45 plays, you're not going to get it. You're not going to be able to take advantage of those backups. You're just not. While the offense looked putrid, I actually thought the defense played pretty well. I, I didn't think they were that bad. Although once again, too many third and longs given up. Just way too many. It's so frustrating when that happens, especially that Lynch one early on. You know, third and 15, and goes right up the middle and picks up 21 yards. Now, I was really worried about Lynch coming in, but I, I thought the Eagles, they did an outstanding job of bottling him up. You know, he had that 21-yarder early on that third and 15, but other than that, limited to 86 yards on 23 carries. Fletcher Cox was unbelievable again. I mean, what can I say about this guy? He's a freaking monster. And I thought Michael Kedricks was outstanding as well. His closing speed is absolutely unreal. Russell Wilson, 22 of 37 for 263 yards with two touchdowns. Added 48 yards rushing, including that 26-yard score off a of zone read that, well, Trent Cole, he whiffed on pretty bad there. And what can I say about Wilson? I mean, he is some kind of special. 
eluding would-be tacklers, keeping his eyes downfield, and finding open receivers. Eagles recorded just two sacks, but they had a plethora of opportunities to get a lot more. They just couldn't bring them down. Philly, it didn't necessarily blitz a lot. You know, rushing with three guys and keeping Connor Barwin in that spiral. Barwin sometimes came after Wilson as a pass rusher, but most of the time he was keened on him breaking out of the pocket. But what can I say? The defense, it kept the Eagles within striking different distance in the first half. You know, you had a, lot of, you had a couple times where Seattle drove into Philly territory, but the birds would stiffen up and force the Seahawks to punt. The, the play that really stood out was that Kendrick sack. I mean, God damn, he closed on him in a freaking blink, in a hurry. I mean, that, that was awesome. Um, but, yeah, that's it for today. Uh, I'm going to get Mike on the show tomorrow to really break down this game. Uh, once again, work, you know, schedules weren't able to, you know, match our times up. So we'll get him on tomorrow, get his thoughts on the game. And that's that. So make sure you follow us on Twitter, at the Bitter Birds. Later all, peace out.